every now and then people binge watching this show during uh, uh, quarantine, during this pandemic. Every now and then I'll get a text saying, hey, man, just I saw you on Billions. Saw that show. They, uh, I'm binge watching the show. It's Dynamite. I saw you on it. And um, it truly, that day of shooting on that set was truly amazing. Not only because it's one of my favorite uh, shows, so but I got but I got to meet this gentleman who's calling in right now here on this show. Um, he is the man who plays the fantastic character of Wags in the most dynamic fashion. Also, uh, fans of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul know this man too. David Costable here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, been, David? Uh, I've been all right. How about yourself, my friend? I am doing fine. I'm doing fine. First of all, let's just let's start with your episode. What I like to refer to as your episode. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate fantastic, that. Fantastic, fantastic work. First of all, how thank did you. you feel after watching it? Um, I was thrilled, delighted, but I'll be nice. honest. I'm going to share with you. Uh, just uh-huh. slightly disappointed. Because okay, they left some of your best stuff on the floor. Yes, David. <laughs> yes, right. David. Well. Yes, mm-hmm. I actually worked blue for Koppelman and Levine and Showtime, uh-huh. and I mm-hmm. worked blue, and maybe they were trying to protect me from myself because <laughs> it didn't make it. Because didn't make it. My favorite line was, and I can't repeat it here, but you know <laughs> the the fight between Mafi and Dollar Bill was so terrible. I said that if they mm-hmm. made a movie out of it, it would be called Raging Bull S. You know, and ah, nice. I thought that was a great line. Yep. And and you tell me you you've probably been on the business end of this. Cop yep. Brian Koppelman comes up, laughs, great job. That was hilarious. Doesn't use it. You know what I'm saying? What happened, Dave? It's, it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> now you know. Now you know what it's really like to be on billions, my friend. So oh. like, people are coming up to you and they're just like, "That was fantastic," and you're like, "Yeah, but you can't even imagine how great it was. <laughs> it was twice as good as what we what you saw." <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, when you get a script and you see what they have coming out of your mouth as wags, what is your reaction, oh, yeah. David? <laughs> I mean, usually I laugh. They, they've only, I think, I've only ever twice been, I think, I think once in the second season, which I know I cannot say on this program. Yes. Um, it was really just like, wow, wow. I ain't going to say that, but I, 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 you know, I get to say all the best stuff there is like nobody gets the never i get all the juiciest tidbits there are so it's fantastic it's like a it's like a kid in a candy store. well i mean it's it's uh it's you're it, you fit right in the role david um Thank you. and Thank and, you. and and having met you in person you're you're kind of nothing like the guy david well, at least you know, when we started that that is true when we started i was the character was when we did the pilot the character was the complete opposite i was supposed to be an upper east side Wasp, who was like the man, the quiet man behind the man. And then we shot the pilot and they saw it and they were just like, no, we, they cut everything I did. And then they were just like, you, we've got to go complete opposite. No kidding. And I'll tell you, I, unless, because I knew that Brian and David had created the show, I never would have been cast in that role. Nobody but them knew that I could do this and knew that I could turn on a dime. And they're just like, just attack, just attack. <laughs> and, just attack dog. and I was just like, I can attack. And so. All of that, all of that sublimated rage, it just gets to come right out and not sublimated anymore, baby. It's just out. Well, I mean, that, so it's amazing. So your original character of Wags was supposed to be the exact opposite of who you are currently yeah, playing. Like Tom, Tom Hagen, sort of Tom hagen Yes, your little godfather yeah. phrase. Okay, yeah. just nice and even keeled behind the scenes, exactly. sort of conciliary exactly. to somebody of exactly. Axelrod's id and instead yeah. you're just the exact complete opposite now isn't that amazing your character this season is uh disappointed because uh one of your children has found religion and another one uh the pole has it, it's been yeah. described on this program that is, that is correct <laughs> that is correct my friend he's a sad excuse he's a sad excuse for a father let's just say <sighs> I don't uh, know if you would want him as your dad. I no, that, that's but it's, all it's funny. because You again, would want him as your drinking buddy, but maybe not your, your dad. Definitely not. Uh, David Constable here on The Rich Eisen Show. And, you know, because, again, when when we met and we, we were chit-chatting uh, behind the scenes, uh, you couldn't have been nicer. And that's the one thing I took oh, from the man. entire no, – honestly, the entire – it just seemed like everybody got along, and it was just a fun day, a very long yeah. day, but a fun day. And I asked to take a photograph with you, and you smiled. And then I said, can you give me your best wags? 
And then uh, mm-hmm. you, you you completely changed and flipped the middle finger at the camera. Yeah. And right now we're showing yeah. the split screen. We're, I guess we're seeing the regular you, and then on the right, yeah. the wags you. Wags it, it's yeah. a, and, and that's the switch that you were talking about that you could flip right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He lives deep inside me. <laughs> all the way in there. When he comes out... Oh my! Are you modeling after anybody that and you've so met? How exciting! I mean, for me, I will also say I yes. got to meet the heavyweight champion of the world. That's right. Yes, that was one of I was. I rarely get starstruck, and I, I actually, yeah, I, it, it was the my the, the person who does my makeup, the woman. She was like, go up and talk to him because I kept I'd been for weeks. I'd been talking about seeing Beyonce, and she was just like, go and see him, go and say hi. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's the, I, I can't. It's the well, world champion. I can't. It's the heavyweight champion of the world. The funny thing and, is, David, is that that scene was shot uh, in January of 2019, and it was mere days, I think, or weeks. After Wilder put Fury on the canvas here in Los Angeles, yeah, and it yeah. seemed like Fury got way more than ten seconds to get up off the canvas. Yes. And the director of this episode, who's standing next to Deontay Wilder in this photograph, um, uh, not Axelrod, obviously, not mm-hmm. uh, Damien mm-hmm. Lewis, but he mm-hmm. like Damien Lewis, a a, a Brit. I forget his name yeah, escapes Colin, me. Colin Buxton. Yes. I mentioned to him that Fury might have gotten some extra seconds, and he was really pissed at me about <laughs> even mentioning that in that conversation. <laughs> yes. Well, it's all those things. Like, in our, in, in our company, there's, there's a, a very large number of us are big boxing fans. Um, which you don't find every day. You know, you don't find a whole group of people who really love Boston. So, but we, you know, we talk about it all the time and watch the fights together. And it's, it's incredible. I mean, I, I love it. I loved boxing since I was a kid. So uh, I used to watch, you know, Ali with my dad when, you know, you could watch, you could watch it on ABC. Like they just, it was on. And, yeah. then, and then growing up, you know, it was Sugar Ray and Tommy Hearns and Hagler and, so, are, where where are you from originally? Do you have a? I'm from DC. You're from, from DC, DC originally. So, do you yeah. have any uh, any teams from DC that are your teams, David? That uh, yeah, of course. Like I'm such a like I, but only the losingest squads possible. <laughs> you know, I traded I traded what well, formerly the Bullets for the Knicks when I moved to New York. Oh my word! Like, I'm gonna, I mean, of course, I'm going to keep the, the Washington Football Team. I'm going to keep them, <laughs> which has which since the '80s, where what what how has that served me? And I was going to keep. The Orioles, which has also not literally not served me at all, it's a tragedy of the highest order. Well, it's a good thing that your career is uh, is making up for it, David. <laughs> my, my sports choice. Well, I mean, uh, you take a look at the the shows you've been in. The current one, Billions. Um, uh-huh. al- also, um, you, you you look at the rest of your career. The Wire, Damages, oh, yeah, Breaking yeah. Bad, and Better Call Saul. That is a hell of a hit list. What was your experience like on the set of Breaking Bad, David? Uh, well, before I got the show, you know, I had been watching the show from the very beginning, and right. uh, I was mightily intimidated by walking onto the set of what I, of this television show that I just love. So I was terrified that it was going to mess it up. Um, but everybody, again, was incredibly kind to me and really generous. And um, Brian is a, is a fantastic friend. Uh, this is just a really nice guy. And so is Aaron. And, and people were really kind to me. And I knew this role very well. And I really felt like he lived, he also sort of lived inside me this very, um, you know, earnest, uh, open, vulnerable scientist who just loved science, and then sort of started to fall in love with Walter White. And um, it was a, it, it's when you when you get to do good writing, it's so much easier than doing bad writing. Um, and that was spectacular writing to work on, and it was and on some level it was it was incredibly easy. You really, just had to get out of the way and let the writing come forth. Well, I think. You know, We've had some of uh, your colleagues from that show we've been fortunate to have here on the show. Giancarlo Esposito came on and said oh, a yeah. couple of times he one. he said he had a, he had to take a moment um, after some of his scenes that it was it just absolutely drained him emotionally and took something yeah. out of him. He needed a moment. Did that did that ever happen to you? On that yeah, set? when 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 Aaron killed me, that was really spoiler alert. By the way, um, <laughs> that was. <laughs> Ten years later, um, that was uh, it was very draining, and also because 
you know, because I was then leaving the show, of course, which was incredibly sad personally, and I had to go find another job. Um, right. But also just that, you know, you love the character and to watch these two people who, you know, neither of them wanted it to happen, and it happened, and it was really, it was a very draining moment. And Vince directed that episode, and so it was a great, it was a, it was, it was the, we were all feeling it the same amount, I think. Well, I mean, it's good that you, um, you know, your character uh, was reincarnated on Better Call That's Saul true. on the prequel. Um, did in, in the scene that you 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 were in, did you have to memorize the entire periodic uh, table you, you, of they, elements? They gave me, I think they gave me something like six days to memorize memorize that Godforsaken song. It's so hard. I sat and I probably went over it a thousand times. And it's just now it's now it's just in there like you can't get it out like you just you can't get it out of your head because you can't it's it i also knew that walking into the set i was going to have to be doing a, a chemistry experiment while i was singing the song and i had to look like i was an expert at both and yes. i am surprisingly not a chemist <laughs> and uh so I was improvising a chemistry experiment that yes. had to look believably like a chemistry experiment and sing the song so it was um I, I almost went mad learning so it, but I did learn it. Would you like it. right now be able to if I tested you on the periodic and aluminum selenium, hydrogen and oxygen, nitrogen and aluminum, and the oxygen and nitrogen and uranium. There you go. Okay, so no, no. I mean, my gosh, uh, no. I was just, I, I was just going to ask you what the symbol for boron uh -huh. was. I mean, literally, was all I was going to do, but, <laughs> but you went the extra mile. Um, yeah, sure, sure. So before I let you go, uh, un I, I, I mean, I talk about a, a, a gut punch. Um, I for for some, this is the last episode of Billions until you can shoot more. This is the last episode you shot before the pandemic hit. Is that correct? It That's airing Sunday night. It is indeed, and I directed this episode. No kidding. Okay. It is Fantastic. So now you get now you get to judge me on two fronts. Okay. So great. did you did you go up to somebody and say great stuff, and then they, it hits the cutting room floor, David? Did you do did you did you do that to somebody uh, this I week? Did, I did not. However, I am not the last person in the editing chain. Ah. You, you may know about this, so that there have been, in fact, um, there there may be, in fact, some. Some people that may have had that experience, not okay. due to my own my own cutting methods, but people who are higher than me on the chain of cutting. So, what is it like being a colleague of, uh, say, Paul Giamatti, um, and now suddenly going up to him saying, "Why don't you try it this way?" Uh, how, how does that work? I mean, it's every, every there wasn't one actor on the show who wasn't totally down with me being uh, coming up to them. And, and engaging with them and talking with them. I think my own experience, having worked with many kinds of directors, that often actors who have become directors, you know how to speak in a, in a way that is uh, that you don't have to translate. Sometimes you'll get a director who will give you a note and have to translate what they really mean into something that you can play or do. And I think for me, it was it was easier on that level to walk up to them and really give them something that I knew that they could they could go forward with without having to translate it or having to sort of try to figure out what it, what I really meant. Um, and so it was incredible and to be able to for my first effort to, to work with world class actors is you know. It, no, nobody gets that opportunity. Well, I love the show, and it's great. You are awesome in it. Thank so you. is everybody else, man. I'm, I'm crestfallen that, that this is going to be the last new one until uh, we can get through all this and get back to yeah. work. Um, but there will be more. I love it. Last one for you. Who, other than yours, is your favorite character on the show? Uh, I would have to say uh, Chuck Sr. Yeah. I'm with you, David. That's the win. <laughs> Every word out of his mouth is cotton candy oh, yeah. on the floor, man. Cool. Unbelievable. Cool. You can't, and that, that is, that's true. Like, from the first time we read the script out loud together, you're just dying. He's incredible. He's incredible. <laughs> he never misses. And never misses. I am with you, uh, and you are you are one A to his one B or one B to his one A, man. Uh, well, just thank you very much. it's Appreciate great it. chatting with you, uh, great reconnecting yeah. with you, and let's chat again yeah. soon, David. Be well. We'll do. Take care. You got it's David Constable right here. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.